Genshin Impact is a game that is known for its immense polish, amazing animation, and their fantastic combat system. And everything about that all comes together within each character's elemental burst. It truly is the game's pinnacle of merging that specialness of each character with the combat elements that they have. We're going to rank every single elemental burst using it as an excuse to talk about how well they're designed, how well they incorporate into each kit. We'll break through what makes some elemental bursts really well designed and where others really fall kind of flat. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Starting with Albedo. Now visually, I like his burst. I think it looks really neat the way it zooms in on him. It's not my favorite design, but it's not my least favorite either. But where it falls off for me is in its actual functionality. Basically, it does some damage. It has a low energy cost. And with its passive, he boosts all of the elemental party members by 125 elemental mastery. Now, at first glance, this actually seems pretty decent. We do some good damage with a pretty okay multiplier for such a low burst cost. And boosting EM is very valuable for a lot of teams. However, this damage does not scale with the same type of damage that Albedo's skill does. As you can see, Albedo's skill scales off of defense, but his burst scales off of attack. If it doesn't specify um, a different scaling like HP or defense, then it automatically scales with attack. So you're either going to have your burst doing no damage or your skill doing no damage. And because his skill multiplier is a lot better than his burst multiplier for how many times it hits. And on top of that, Mono Geo, which he's often played in, this elemental mastery is basically useless because boosting crystallized shields crystallize is very unreliable no matter what you're doing. So essentially his burst is almost a nothing part of his kit. And it really is one of the worst design bursts in the game. Ayaka is next. So for her burst, it really is the main part of her kit. Everything in her kit revolves around getting this maxed out the damage as high as possible. So using her skill to provide good energy for it, essentially build your whole team around buffing this one item. And for an ability, it does not disappoint. It does an absolute massive multiplier for how many times it attacks. It's not that it has no downsides because it is an ability that moves forward and it has a tendency to stagger enemies out of the way. So it really takes tends to work either against bosses or of course in freeze. So if I were to put this in power, I would probably put it in, in the A tier. Maybe you could even say it's S, but it does have some drawbacks. But in terms of how well it's designed, both its animation, but also the overall design in its kit, I think it's really good design. It's not so overpowered that it automatically does all of the damage at once. You have to be smart about if you're using it in a boss, you have to make sure that it's not gonna be jumping around everywhere right when you're using it. And if you're using it against mobs, you have to make sure that they're grouped up and frozen. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into it. It's not all reward and no risk, and it's not all risk, no reward. It's a perfectly designed burst in my opinion. Next, we have Dilu. <laughs> Essentially, his burst is all about the damage. In terms of visuals, this is a 10 out of 10. This is one of the peak designs, especially for being one of the first five stars ever revealed. But even to this day, you know, when, when a casual sees Diluc's burst be cast, they're like, that's badass. From an aesthetic, it gets huge points. From functionality wise, I would have honestly preferred to see a higher energy cost and maybe even a longer cooldown because you're realistically only casting it once per rotation anyways. And so a 12 second cooldown just doesn't line up with the rest of his kit, the rest of the synergies and a 40 energy cost. Like it's basically a nothing energy cost. So of course the damage coming from a, from a short cooldown, low energy cost burst is not gonna be insane. And, and it's not, I, it would have been really nice if it actually had a longer cooldown down at a more a bigger energy cost maybe like 60 or something just so you have a bigger multiplier attached to it because as it is the damage isn't huge it's not zero either so it's it's you know it's not it's not, not albedo tier but it's it's somewhere around b or c for me because of the really amazing visuals i'm going to give it a b yeah we'll leave it there for now Eula. Eula really is one of my favorite bursts in the game. The mechanic where you have to stack it and build it up and depending on the hits you get on the enemy and it's backload damage. So it has a really, really high multiplier, the highest multiplier in the game for one single hit. But there's some risk in place where you have to hit enemies and do your optimal combos to make sure that you get all that damage off. I really, really like the way it's designed. Unfortunately, it's just a bit under tuned. If it was just a bit stronger, because basically it feels like the, the risk to reward is not there. Like with Ayak that still has that energy cost it still has that risk factor but the payoff that you get is so much more worth it but it is very satisfying to see the hard numbers i'm going to put it in a tier because i really love the visuals i love the mechanic it's just lacking a little power but it is almost a perfect burst 
Ganyu is a has a really really nice burst as well. Absolutely gorgeous visuals. Uh, the fact that it actually has true quadratic scaling makes it synergize really really well with Venti, so it can be really powerful. The thing that I really don't like about it, however, is her most common playstyle is Melt at this point, and in Melt, by using her burst, it can actually mess up the rest of her kit, and you can't actually use um, you can't actually get Melt on her charge attacks because some of your burst hits might melt. So because it doesn't even function, I don't even I I, I bet you Melt wasn't even an intended playstyle for Ganyu. It seems like just for the or, or the devs just didn't know what they were doing because using her burst and melt being like a damage loss a decent percentage of the time is really poor design in my opinion. So for that reason I, I can't put it higher than B tier even though I think it's a gorgeous animation um, and it's great in freeze because of its lack of synergy with melt like I almost won't even put it in C tier because it's it's like her best team you can't even really use her burst then and I and I really I really don't like that. So but it is so good in freeze. We'll go B tier. Hu Tao. I love Hu Tao's burst. I'm a really big fan of one big number that can just go bam and the enemy you can see the enemy health bar go down and because you can reverse vaporize this hit you build lots of elemental mastery on her anyways for her charge attacks. You can get one really nice big burst. You get some healing. It's very satisfying. Um, you can save your burst so that you can do have an iframe and heal as which is especially useful if you're not running a shielder like Zhang Li. It really is her burst that pulls that it synergizes so well with her kit because it heals her up just the perfect amount so that you have more health for the next rotation but it doesn't heal you up too much so that you can't go back down below 50 percent health so overall i i just think that her burst is perfectly designed for her kit the animation is absolutely god tier it looks so good and just the way that they did it was really really smart and i feel like she has one of the best co most cohesively designed kits in the game so super love who tows burst For Ito, this is another really, really well-designed burst. When you're in his burst state, you're doing these hacking and slashing charge attacks, and the way that they change the Claymore charge attack so that it actually feels fluid and exciting to play, and you're not staggering your enemies back so much because of the way they changed his base internal charge attack mechanics, and the way you have to stack it up, the animation, everything about Ito, I, I think I think it has to go into the S tier. Like I think they really, really designed a really, really fun and satisfying kit around his burst. I don't really think that there's any problems with it, although to be fair, I don't actually have Ito on my account yet. As soon as he reruns, I'll get him. I think if if I think that the burst is really well designed, I'm gonna put it in S tier. Like Genshin doesn't miss that much. It's just if they actually have a really noticeable flaw, that's when they'll go down to one of the other tiers. For Kazuha, what I like about it is that it infuses with a different element and that completely changes the way that he functions in the team. If you're using him with Raiden, for instance, Raiden Bennett, if you're fighting against enemy mobs that are easily staggered, you want to infuse his burst with Electro before you pop your Bennett. But if you're fighting a big boss, you want to infuse his burst with Pyro so that you can get massive, massive overloaded when he when his Pyro burst swirls against the electric aura that Raiden provides against the enemy. So overall, what I don't like about it is how it really obscures your vision it's a beautiful animation but it really really obscures your vision and i think that its utility is just a little bit lacking so i'm gonna put it in the a tier i don't think it quite enhances his kit it's just sort of there that's my opinion if you think differently that's totally fine this is more of a light-hearted video so if you're taking this too seriously then you know touch touch some grass let's have fun with this but i would love to hear your takes in the comments and if you think i'm totally wrong that's totally fine just take it just just take it a little bit light just take a deep breath before you write an angry comment just take a nice deep breath okay Okay, we're good. Let's go. For Kaching, I love Kaching's burst. And the way that it hits many, many times synergizes really, really well with the aggravate playstyle. The 40 cost on her is actually really, really useful rather than on Diluc because she is much more of a quick swap unit. So you can swap in and out of her and just cast her burst whenever it's off cooldown. And this is a great burst. I'm going to give that one S tier. And the animation is god tier, especially with her new skin. It just looks incredible.
for Klee. The animation is cute and it's strong. My issue with Klee, I find her burst unsatisfying. And the reason why is because she's a bomb character. I want to feel like when I'm using a character like Klee, I want to see the bomb blow up and a big explosion and the enemy health bar just go boom. I'm, I'm biased that way. I like burst and I'm partial to burst where the enemy just explodes in one big hit. Of course, I'm going to not, I'm not going to knock points for other characters for not having a burst that way. But for Klee being a bomb character, that really just rubs me the wrong way. And I'm putting in B tier for not a bomb. And if you're mad about that, then I'm sorry. But that's what I think. For Kokomi, huh. this one is interesting. The thing about her burst is Kokomi has a really confusing kit. Like a lot of her kit does revolve around her burst, but a lot of the way that you use her in her best teams is essentially just a skill bot and her burst, its main function is to refresh the her jellyfish and using an entire burst just to refresh your skill is kind of weird. Of course, when you're using her on field, then her burst takes a much more prominent, prominent position. It improves her damage, but I feel like that her kit is a little bit messy with her burst. And so I don't really like the way it's designed. I love the animation. The animation is a god tier. It's amazing. Maybe I could put it, maybe I could put it in B tier. When she's on field, it does, it's pretty nice. So I won't be too hard on it. We'll put it in B tier for now. I still stand by Albedo though. That is just an absolute waste. For Mona, another god tier animation, amazing voice acting work. I love her burst a lot. Plus, I love the way that it has that big nuke and it can really buff and do nuke showcases and stuff like that. I'm, as you know, I'm a big fan of those big numbers. I feel like Mona's burst is really, really great. I think it's the rest of her kit that kind of falls apart. Like she has, she has a skill that's sort of just like a taunt and it's just, I don't know, it's the rest of her kit that I don't like as much. I think her burst is actually pretty, pretty nice. I think I'm not gonna put an S tier because I've heard people talk about how different things are bugged and I, don't, I haven't used her myself and I hear she's kind of unintuitive to use in a lot of ways. So I'm going to put an A tier for now, but let me know if you think it belongs in B or F. Or Jean. Oh, Jean. Her burst has a really big problem in that it actually staggers enemies outwards. Whereas most animal characters are able to suck enemies inwards with their abilities, Jean actively prevents them from entering the field, which is not good. The burst only does damage when the enemies are in the field, and the fact that it pushes them out is really, really bad. It does a lot of healing and it does some decent damage, but the fact that it has anti synergy, it has some great stuff with Sunfire, I guess it has some good shield breaking. So it has has some serious flaws but I guess there's that shield breaking and shredding potential in the Sunfire stuff um we'll put it in B tier I won't be I won't be too hard on it Now for Chi Chi, it marks the enemies with the little talisman and then whenever you hit them, you heal and it just does absolutely overkill healing. It's whatever, it's really not. I think that's our first C tier. It At least it synergizes with the rest of her kit. Like it, it's, a, it's a burst that makes sense, but the fact that it, all it does is heal and that's all her entire kit does, um, it really all comes together to make a really lackluster and we'll go, we'll go with C. For Shen He, I'm definitely extremely biased, so let me try and take this objectively. It's really similar to Kazuha's burst. It's got a god tier animation, and it has some nice effects with the crowd damage bonus, crowd resistance down, physical resistance down, some decent damage. I'm gonna put it in A. I think it's solid. I think it's good. I don't think it's incredible. <laughs> I'd like it to maybe be a bit more interactive. Just her kit overall is not particularly interactive, but that's the nature of a buffer, so maybe if it staggered the enemies inwards, I guess that'd be a little too OP. I just feel like it's not it is you know it's not an s tier it's not an s tier burst i just think it's an a tier i think it's good. but that animation though i'm putting an s tier for the animation you guys can sue me yeah Now Raiden, that, now my bias is showing. Raiden is in a tier all of her own. Obviously Bubasaur, obviously. But the fact that you get this massive intense slash that just chunks the enemy for a massive amount of front loaded HP and you can Omega buff it using a ton of other stuff in the game. And it makes her, it gives her invulnerability to stagger, just completely invulnerable. She cannot be staggered by anything. You truly feel godlike. And if you invest in her properly with really, really excellent artifacts, she shreds, she feels like a god, she feels 
feels like an Archon DPS, and it's just the perfect length of time to be buffed by Kazuha, by Bennett, by Kujo Sara, or pair with another, and, or you can pair her with another Energy Hunger user like Yaimiko or Yelan, and you can recharge their burst. Ugh, it's just fantastic. It's so, so good. And it's so, and you can optimize it with some combos, or you can just mash. I, I am biased, of course, but I really do think it is one of the best design bursts. And a big problem that a lot of characters that rely on their burst for damage has is energy, and she helps restores her own energy, and, and she gets incentive for building energy recharge on her. So especially if you have her signature, you can just stack energy recharge, makes it really easy to get her burst back up. And so you, it not only is it comfy to play, smooth to play, powerful to play, the animations, godlike, it's just, it's just incredible. I definitely didn't plan on making this a two-parter, but as you can see, it's gotten way too long. If you want to see part two, please subscribe. This video took way more effort than normal for me to make. So if you want to show your support, if you want to see higher edit videos like this, then subscribe. If you want to support me on Patreon, check out that link. If you want to join a great community, check out our Discord. And if you don't want to do any of those things, that is totally fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.